Green here. Hey, everybody, welcome to Thriving Past 50. And you know, for years and years, I've worked with real estate clients, not just about, uh, you know, how many bedrooms they want, but what's the life that they really want to create. And those of you who know me, hear me talk about how do we do that with heart, with insight, with caring. And of course, real estate, uh, the transactions are extremely complex and more so these days. So when it comes down to money, I just completed a sale with a young firefighter, uh, paramedic woman. She's absolutely adorable. And I helped her buy her first home. And it's like, okay, now that's the kind of business I really do extremely well. She and her family are just thrilled with me. And I'm going, okay, I like that. There's meaning. When we find meaning in our professional kindness realm. That's what you're hearing me talk about in Kids Have Circle. You hear me talk about everywhere. So I'm going to share a screen here in a moment, and we're going to have some fun. Let's take a look if you can see that screen. Thriving Past 50, yes? Does that look like a yes, guys? Not no. yet. No, I see just a black just a black uh, or a start of screen sharing. sharing. Let's not do that. Okay, let's stop share and get this to work. And there you are. Good. And let's share the screen again here. Okay, don't mess with me now. Messing with you. I believe it is messing. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> There we go. There you go. Uh -huh. Yay. Got it. That's what we're looking for here. So, hey guys, you, you know, one day we're out uh, in the Bremerton area, beautiful, uh, big, lazy day. And here's this big ocean current coming in like mad. And this person down there in that little canoe going against the grain, going upriver. And it was just a kind of a cool thing. And there they are slicing through the water. I think. This community has a, a great heart for veterans. So as a Vietnam veteran, I feel quite honored when I'm around this uh, community. And this person is a veteran. We got a chance to meet them. And there's, a, there's something about as time goes by, how do we make the best use of our time? Because really, there's two lives that we live. There's two lives that we live. There's our first life. We're actually you know, we're finding our direction, we're going to school, we're, we're getting our balance, we're trying to fall in love, we're going to do all that kind of thing. And then there's our second life, when we realize we really only have one life. And what you're hearing me share, I've had all these years of minor skin cancer, now it's advancing. And I have great care, but it's making me say, this is my next time. I heard a wonderful man talk about his cancer uh, thing. He said, Forrest, I thought that cancer was a bump in the road. No, no, no. It's a fork in the road. And I'm on this new fork. All right. Because time's going by for all of us, but let's age less along the way. Let's age less. And we do that with good health care. This is my grandpa. We're living longer lives. And we all know that, I guess. But the thing is, we're actually explorers now in a new world, there's more people of our age and growing older than ever before. And that brings with it the complexities of care and medical and all that stuff. But the real thing is so many Americans, so many, do not have the financial base for as long as they're going to live. So with all the years of healthy life, how do we live those healthy life times and still stay good about money and all this kind of thing? Here's my promise to you today. In the Thriving Past 50 Masterclass, here's my promise. You will get a taste of what is your number one priority for thriving. You'll get a sense and maybe express why. Why would you do this? Why set a new course? And you might even find two or three ideas. I'll send this recording back out to folks who couldn't make it today. You might want to catch some of the ideas. And perhaps you might even meet a cool search team. And what I'm talking about, the search team is the groups that we create through this project, and it'd be I'd be part of them, and these other folks on the call would be kind of your partners in searching. What are the priorities that you really have about vitality, about life purpose, a financial planning, maybe friends and family, creative life, all that kind of thing, and not freak out. 
We don't need to freak out. It's too easy to go. Time's flying. How am I doing? All right. But you know, as we do this, maybe we can even stop once in a while and take three thoughtful breaths together. Part of what I'm looking to do, let's just do it. Let's take a nice big breath together. Because, boy, I have been in a rush my whole life. Let's take another one. I've been, I have been trying to make money, get approval, and be in a hurry for most of my life. And maybe you all can relate to that. I don't want to assume that you do that. But today, I'd like one of our friends on the call is my friend Lou, who he describes himself as a lifelong learner. There he is. I'm going to ask you to consider to be a long life learner. You, a long life learner. How do we learn together and share the wisdom we get with each other in a productive and fun way? Well, here's a story. Imagine two young, scrappy guys like this fellow here, two young guys, and they've got a cool company that they created. It's the year is 2000. And the year is 2000. They have a cool company where they'll send you DVDs, movies you can see at home. Wow. And it was a real competitive time. They're on their way to Dallas, Texas, because they are saying they want their number one competitor to buy them. So they go to this big glass and steel building and go and see the fancy CEO. And the guy goes, OK, boys, what, what do you want? They said, we want you to buy us. We do these videos and we send them out. And the guy says, get out of here. Online business does not work. You know, there's no way. Kid, what do you, what do you want? Give us $50 million. He laughs. He laughs them out the door and sends them on their way. And OK, well, boy, what a story. In 10 years, Mr. Fancy Blockbuster went bankrupt and the two boys never sold. Netflix is now worth $29 billion. And what happened? The world moved on from Blockbuster doing the same old thing. And their deal was in the store, pick up a, a movie and come back. You know what? The world is changing. And that's what we are talking about. To insert. Not, maybe not everybody knows this, but there is one Blockbuster left and it's in Bend. Door. Is that right? Well, Frank, you're set then, man. That's great. Well, the world moved on. And how quick is our world moving, you guys? Let's really look. And look at what we feel clear about as to technology, as to healthcare. With my uh, cancer treatments, there are treatments now that are not just you know chemo and radiation, but no uh, immune therapy to help a person's immune immunity take over and cancel the cancer. Well, that's cool. I want to learn as much about that as you know and I can know. All right. So basically, I'm saying, welcome to the rest of your life. And from today forward, how do we team up and love each other enough to thrive beyond our, our safety zone and beyond the box, right? This is me walking through the, the forest. I'm not alone. I've got Sandra. I've got you. We're, we're doing this. And let me consider, if you don't mind, sharing a poem that, that tells a little bit of, uh, of my thoughts on all this. You ask me, Forrest. Why would I want to live a whole lot longer? Because I'm not getting better looking and I'm not getting any stronger. But what if we could live to a dignified older age and be proud of who we are at each and every stage? Now, some people say aging is not for wimps and are those faint of heart. But what if we can learn about aging well and aging really smart? Let's all know that we still matter and that we don't disappear. And together, we overcome our worries and what we might fear. The fear of losing ourselves and our independent way about being less important as our hair turns gray. So, yeah, we're asked to yield to the wisdom of the years, but not to give up living because we had those fears. Have we all known good people who give up their light and give in to dark thoughts and dark feelings before it turns night? Are they fading fast? as that old habit becomes their reality? And will they ever reach out to seek some new vitality? I had the chance to do the marriage ceremony for this young couple and their dream was to walk the beach of Hawaii for those days. And they were so clean and clear. Their energy was so beautiful and positive. 
you guys would love them. And uh, their, their wedding ceremony was full of joy. I'm asking you to consider why would you want to uh, make some good changes in your life? There's a guy named Simon Sinek, and he wrote this book, Start With Your Why, over 60 million views on TED. Take a look at this short thing that he did, because he talks about what's our why? why? Why are we here? Who are we? What do we want for ourselves that we didn't even know about five years ago or 10 years ago? How old will I be in 10 more years? Well, let's talk about that. What worries do each of us have about getting older? What thoughts do I have about the future as to money, as to my body, as to my belly, as my hair, hairline and my eyesight and, and my sense of being cared about? So here's the second point. Build from your many life skills. We're going to build from here based on all the things that have made you who you are now. And that's the cool thing. A lot of us have come through life with incredible skills. Let's value those. And that's our platform to go from here. Now, here's the 10-year test. This wonderful woman, she's 25 years old, and she said, I want to be a dancer. Oh, man, I want to be a dancer. But I didn't start as a dancer when I was four or 12 or you know, like pros do, she asked herself in 10 years, will I regret not learning to dance when I'm 35? Well, she said, absolutely. And she took off with a, with a fire and she absolutely got her dance plan in place. What if today is your turning point? What if, I mean, we've all through a million seminars, we tried to fix our thing. What if today is actually a turning point for you and for me? It's possible. Here's our friend Denise. She just got back from Europe. She did three weeks around Italy on her e-bike. And she's a pianist. She's sitting there next to the statue of Puccini. She's an absolutely adorable mental health nurse. She's one of our, our great crew of people here in Kohala, uh, in uh, <laughs> Kitsap, that is. And she's a dream, wonderful person, 72 years old. She's looking for a nice man uh, relationship. And she's adorable. That's Denise. So we, we, get to, we get to look at the dreams we have. What dream do you have about your health? What dream do you have about your creativity? I'm playing that fiddle. And what about finding new paths, new friends? And how do we find the brightest spark for our future from here forward? Again, based on who you are now, this chapter of life. I have a wonderful client in Hawaii, wonderful guy. And the chapter was good earlier to build that house, but with his health issues, boy, don't be on that island if you have some health problems. For me, a big start happened in martial arts. And you can see me in the back aisle here. I took up martial arts when I was 48 years old. I'd always been athletic, but it took me 10 years to get a black belt and to become a teacher. Uh, this was a crew of people come from all around the world. There's my wife, Sandra, in the front row to the left there. I think the thing of having sense uh, something that is uh, sustainable, that uh, calls you to your highest self, Aikido has been that for me, 17 years of practice. And there's this myth. It's called, Forrest, I'm not, I'm not ready. Come on, man. I, I'd like to make a change, but, I, you know, it's the 10-year test lady. She said, don't give me that I'm not ready thing. She said, always start before you're ready. If you wait till you're really ready, when are you going to really go? And I think that was a great insight. And here's a mindset. Let's just, let's test this little mindset out. What if we, each of us, are always taking life at the perfect pace? What if we always hold that we are calm of mind? What if we always hold that we are confident? We'll either know or we'll get support. And that finally, we always follow through. We follow through with what we say. We follow through with our mission. We follow through with caring. And we do that in a support role for others. So part of Thriving Past 50 is find yourself a search team, people who are interested in, in vitality or in you know, money planning or in deepening friendships and creating community. That search team would be somebody you'd partner with and share, share life with. I'm a longevity, longevity counselor. This is the, this is the valley, Polalu, near where we used to live. And when I say I'm a longevity guy, here's what I mean. I went up to Vietnam thinking 
that I was an, you know, patriotic young guy. And what happened was a very bitter uh, war and a cynical war machine that changed me. And then I came back and here's mom and dad. My poor dad crashes his plane in Colorado, age 49, killed. And my mom, right soon after that, got breast cancer out of grief. And I carried her for 19 years, the way she carried me, she carried me and I carried her uh, over to Hawaii. And she had a good experience through her, her last days and, and died in our bedroom. 20 years of men's work, the work that I've done with hundreds and hundreds of men, we started in Hawaii and California. Uh, I led the group uh, across Hawaii. Men's work is revealing because you see how <laughs> well hidden Many men are, uh, their wounds not well spoken and not, not often shared. So here is a group of my buddies and some of them are still around, some are not. But uh, the, the theme we see again and again with people is how many people isolate. And men particularly go into their cave, they go out walking as though they have to figure it all out. And there's an isolation and a chill to that that actually does not support a healthy life. You'll see this in the back of my business card. The idea that your long life really comes from, at the top, health and vitality. It's not just fitness, it's vitality. I want vital energy. And as I swing to the right, life purpose, meaningful work. I'm doing something that matters, and it matters now in my life, even if it's volunteer. Next, financial security and safety. If my money's not working, I don't feel safe. If I'm in a bad neighborhood, I don't feel safe. And next, family and friends, caring connections. How do we find ourselves feeling loved and feeling lovable and feeling full of love? How do we do that? Next, you swing around to creative life. we got to turn on our creative side, side, side as well. Our psyche, our mental functioning all works super better when we turn on the right brain. And finally, long-term plans and legacy. What I'm talking about is careful careful planning into the future, and right up through your last days, actually. How do we do this? What is this ageless path thing all about? Well, it's a positive focus for each day of the week. How about this? If every day there's a reminder that Monday is health and fitness day, it's vitality day. Here's my buddy, William, in a Hawaiian waterfall. It's about life energy. How do we enhance our life energy every week? And we do that and learn that together. On Tuesdays, work that matters, that brings out dignity in you, brings your best talents. You're helping helping others. And again, it's about what matters now in your life, not back when you were 20 years ago or whatever. Tuesdays. And there's lots of really good uh, volunteer opportunities out in communities. I'm part of the, Rot the Rotary Club, and we do international work. It's spectacular. Wednesdays, financial security. Balance your checkbook. What are your cash balances? I'm doing that every Wednesday. And it's smart. I feel safer. Okay. So financial planning. I've got a whole bunch of good financial planners who help us understand the fears we might have about money and whether we'll have enough. Next, are you living in your forever home? Now, I'm also speaking to you as a realtor right now. Are you living in your forever home right now? This house, Vinny and Carol bought it. But she got a little bit scared. She fell down the stairs and really got hurt. This is a 1920s house. They had to move on. So as we get older, our mobility changes, stairs, medical services. These are not really safe all the way, are they? Come Thursday, caring connections. Here I am with my old friend, Tim. I've known him for 40 years. I held his hand and smiled as he died that Sunday morning. He died of cancer, and he was just one of the most sweet, stately men you'll ever know. We were great friends through the men's work for, God, years. And there's another kind of caring called my beautiful Sandra. I mean, that's just amazing to have a spouse that uh, really does care and two dogs that really care. <laughs> this is Mulan and Shiloh. Love comes in so many ways. On Fridays, I'd want your creative life to light up, you guys. What does that mean? Are you a fiddler? Are you a singer? Are you a poet? That little waterfall to the left, it's about our inner self flowing in a beautiful way and, and us feeling like, hey, I'm writing my novel. I'm writing my, my, uh, 
my memoir, Lou. I'm writing poetry. I'm I'm helping do uh, fundraiser fundraiser activities for good nonprofits. Whatever my thing is. Here comes Saturday. Your long range plans and your legacy, and I mean planning right through your last days. You've got to have your will done. You have to have your medical directive done, current, and you have to perfect your power of attorney. Part of our project is helping every single member have these things in place. And it's not expensive, but when I say you have to perfect it, it has to be notarized and recorded. Here comes Sunday. What is your Sunday like? Is it a spiritual retreat day? Is it church? Is it reflection, walk in the, walk in the park, go out in the trees? How do you refresh? How do you rest and renew and maybe even reinvent your path forward? So Sunday can be a day to reinvent. That idea, I'll go back to one thing here, legacy. What's your legacy? When people hear legacy, some talk about, well, I sold a lot of houses or I gave a lot of money. Mine is professional kindness. Mine is fair play. People who know me will remember, you were kind and you were fun, Forrest, and that's, that's your legacy. I want your legacy to be known to me, too. So here, choose your top two thriving priorities. We just went through the days of the week. Yours might be vitality. It might be money, all that. Coming in January, we're going to do something I call the Thriving Past 50 uh, Spring Challenge. We're going to go ahead and have a series of talks together that have to do with our vitality, life energy planning, updating, refining life purpose, bringing it into now. Refresh your financial security plans. I can introduce you to some good counselors, and you probably know some. And finally, building some new caring connections. That seven-day challenge, just a way to launch the new year. As we get near the end, researchers from Yale and Miami University determined people who see growing older as something positive live seven and a half years longer than those who don't. If I hold the thought that getting older is making me better, I'm going to live longer and I'm going to be worried <coughs> alive along the way. Because what I want is you to be the person your dog thinks you are. All right? My dog, Shiloh, he looks at me like I am walking on clouds. And he helps me walk on clouds. Be the person your dog thinks you are. All right? And finally... What's another way to thrive past 50 is be a guide, be a true elder, someone true to your heart and your talents. You've continued to work on yourself. You hold a good space for others. You know, we create this world to be positive uh, in spite of all the negative, badass stuff that happens. We are the people that turn the energy. Okay. So what's next? What's next? I'd like to invite you to, to join our Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group. We'll meet there uh, for short deal and short little presentations every week or so. I'd like you to get the Calm app on your phone. Calm. It costs a couple of bucks. You can get a free trial, but do the Daily J every day. This is Jay Shetty, absolutely wonderful young man. And you get the Calm app and you can listen to it every day. And we'll have that right in our, in our pocket, both of us. Next, number three, ask somebody that you care about this question. Doug, Linda, Sue, if your dream life really comes true, what would that look like? And they'll tell you what their dream life might look like. And I want that to be part of our unbreakable chain. We, we continue to be kind, we continue to be supportive to our friends who are thriving, and we build an unbreakable chain of kindness. Love to have you thrive with us. And uh, my graphic got a little funny. We're on Facebook and on Instagram, uh, where we continue to share what we're learning about this and uh, share with good people what it's all about. So thriving past 50, it's a, it's a step in a certain direction, and it's a decision to be who you really are and enjoy that beingness, I'd say. As we look at some of the folks on the call, I certainly invite any of you who might want to wave your hand and say a word. What are you hearing? 
Darshana, good to see you. Jay West, awesome. Davida, yay. Joyce, hooray. Jim Davidson, my neighbor. And hey, guys, good to see you all. What, um, what have you heard today that's most valuable, I wonder? Who'd like to speak? All at once. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I know this is new. Here, Madani, please. I don't want to leave you hanging. Oh, wait. Sorry. Good. After you, Frank. Sure. Madani, your, your sound is off, huh? Yeah. Uh, Forrest, I just feel so positive and, and hopeful and just enthusiastic. And you just, it just rings through you. And you are just such a positive force. And I just feel so inspired with everything you're saying. Well, uh, you're open, Madani. One thing I just love about you is your kind heart, but your openness and continue uh, to, to be a chivalrous man and to keep <laughs> learning. And, uh, you know, you don't block it. I think that's the thing I'd like to learn is not block uh, news when it's coming my way. Thanks for that. Frank, and you I want, And I want to say thank you to, uh, it's wonderful seeing Frank and Diane yeah. after these years. Uh, I wish we could have been neighbors, but... Uh, yeah, I recognize that's your life. face. Great, I thought, great to I see you. Yeah, that. now I remember yeah. exactly who you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and so was... you you wound up in Bend, Oregon. Uh, we're actually a little north of Bend. We're in a, an area called Cove Palisades State Park. Really, oh. it's incredible. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful area. Or mm -hmm. we'll hopefully get to see it soon. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Great, great well, seeing you. Uh, and yes. this is just so fun. A call like this that can open up. Uh, you know, this kind of a reconnect. I just think it's really funny and cool. What else are you guys hearing? I'd, I'd be so honored to hear any of your comments. Well, what I what I started to say, Forrest, was I, I went through recently kind of an experience that aligns with this pretty well. I, as, as you know, I was, you know, a relatively high profile job. I'd been a fairly active directive leader for quite some time. Right. And then it ended. And you know, I kind of you were right in the middle of abruptly ending, and not sure we're going to land in Hawaii. We're going to land somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, it took us a while. We got our feet on the ground. We're in a great spot. You know, the 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 landing was amazing. It was pathetic how it kind of just fit what we needed. Right. But it still, not until very recently did I quite realize that I was not over the grief of my first life ending. Uh -huh. and, I, and I wasn't really quite ready to accept I was past that and moving on. So I think this, you know, the timing is interesting to me. I sit here and listen to it and think, wow, some somebody laid out in front of me the opportunity to learn even more. Wow. And to look at it that way in, in terms of uh, positive learning, not, not victimhood, like, oh, oh, I'm getting messed up here. And I'm, I'm just completing a, a little short audio book called Choosing Your Second Half of Life, because it's about choosing the second half just in the way you put it. Yeah, nice. It really did come down to just to expand on it a little bit, kind of distilling down the things that you know, I said before we got into the big call, the things that made me happy. It turned out doing things for people really makes me happy. Good, Frank. And the more of that I do, the happier I am. And and there are other things, you know, the creativity side, the industrious side, still doing things to our house that was perfect when we moved into it. <laughs> uh, yeah, <there's, laughs> I can relate. To that. There's, all, there's all those things you have to keep doing. You know, yeah, there's something to fill up all those garages you have. And I hope you take people up into your music room and boom the boom the music like you like to do. Well, maybe you can show me how to play the guitar I've had for 30 years and I still can't play. That's actually a really good idea. I'm in. I'm in. Well, good. Who else would love to tell me what you heard and what uh, what you might be taking away? Well, you know, Her Forrest, I keep saying I'm not going to chime in, but I always can't seem to resist. Um, I've been away. I, I've, I also had uh, some culture shock when I left my big job. You know, I... I uh, was all that in a bag of chips. At least that's what I thought I was. And then after a <laughs> while, I realized that no one really cares. Uh. And, and, I would, and particularly they don't care now. I've been, I've been retired since 2007 oh. and I've got, and I've gotten over that. I've gone on to other things. Sure. But there is, there is a time and, um, 
and I wouldn't go back. So I, I didn't think I'd ever go there. I, I thought, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to, you know, I, it, it was my identity it, yes. that I got, I got over myself. Wow. Uh, but it is always fun to, to meet with people that are um, positive. Yeah. And there's, I'm, I'm probably older than everybody else that's here. And I, so I'm going through different things. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I've, I've passed through some of those other things already. Um, mm. And, and all of these things are important. And I'm dealing with, I don't want to be forgetting things. So that's what, you know, there's a lot of conversation between my sister and my girlfriends about what the hell we're forgetting these days oh, so, uh, well i always get a kick out of you linda because uh i i've got a friend like i say he's been a lawyer and a and a uh, judge for over 60 years and he says forrest the main thing is i think i'm going to maybe lose it man and he's worried when he misplaces his keys he wonders if he's going off the deep end uh, <laughs> what i love about you is you say uh, I'm going to make enough with my little business and you, I'm a client with your business. I'm going to make enough to get someone to do the garden. I'm not interested in gardening. Okay. That's not my thing. I just love that. That's right. And I move, I have that. And now yeah. I'm just, I'm, now I'm working on somebody else to clean my house. Clean the house. <laughs> clean the house. Okay. We're sending some more postcards. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah exactly. Uh, Linda has a wonderful uh, a postcard uh, a stay in touch program that I'm a part of as a uh, in my thriving past 50 work in realty, real estate, real estate work. It's really fun. So that's what's going on. Well, thanks. Good. Good. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Doug, how about you, please? Well, I just was uh, appreciating uh, you and your sharing of your life. You do that so wonderfully. And so um, as was remarked to a couple of uh, people before, uh, kind of up, upbeat, in the, in, in the face of, uh, of you having uh, some challenges that you've entered into, I've been so impressed how you've uh, just carried on doing what you do so well to communicate to people, to have heart, and to, mm -hmm. uh, to tune in. And you're a great model for that. Uh, and so I've, I'm appreciative just to be here as you share with people who obviously are you know, connected with you in some wonderful ways. And uh, you and I have connected for what forty years more than that. You, it's guys. You're meeting Doug, wow. absolutely one of my deepest family members. We've been good friends for forty years. You were my consultant when I had my aerospace company to help me stumble through what leadership was about, and uh, I've been just so appreciative of our connection uh, that we talk every every couple of weeks for all these years. And it's just anyway, so glad you're here and get to. To look in the eyes of my other friends here. Uh, I want to know who wrote the poem. I wrote that poem. No, I, I thought so. Oh yeah, that's kind of. That's, that's good. You've got such a way with words. I I was uh, waiting for you to maybe uh, sing a song. Oh well, I, you know that. He, I, does everybody here know that he uh, strums that guitar and sings those songs? You must remember this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. A sigh is just a sigh. The fundamental things apply. As time goes by, see, we're thriving and we get to enjoy music. Part of it is this program will have chances for each of you to do your creative thing for the group. And that's part of what my whole agenda is. It could be your, your poem. It could be your painting. It could be your, your uh, sachet. Doug, thank you for being in my life. And I love you. And it's so good to have your supportive energy um, in this initiative. I mean, I could be a realtor forever and I will, and that's fine. But this is so enriching to have this conversation with people. Well, it's two way street, Forrest. You're my friend and I love you. Big time, Dougie. Good, good. Uh, Veronica, you were on the call last time, but I'm so glad to see you again. Mm -hmm. One of the people who really took on this idea and said, I'm gonna make some good changes here, Forrest. And um, anyway, I'm just glad to see you again. Yes, and I am, and I, I, I love this, this presentation. You know, you, you go over all the things that worries me, uh, you know? yeah. or I want to have a plan. I want to be prepared. Um, some of you know I work with seniors, and I have the things that I see every day. You know, um, it really, really, you know, sometimes I'm scared. Yeah. And, sure. 
um, I see people who have worked their life and they have nothing. Oh. Or some people that save all their life, you know, and then there is a life event that can take everything away in the split of a oh. second. You know, you never know what, what it could happen. Um, you know, you have people saving forever to take that trip to Europe and it will never happen. Oh. Um, you know, those type of things. So I want to start early. So um, I did one thing. I just on um, Thanksgiving, I went by myself on a trip to Quebec. Oh. It's my bucket list, a place that I really wanted to go. Good. And it was it was pretty funny. I met this lady that she's a tour guy in her 70s. And of course, she asked, they, they were, I was doing a tour and they were all couples and me. And he said, are you traveling by yourself? And I say, I am. He said, good for you. I wait for no one. Oh, uh, yeah. He has five those. children, a husband, a lot of friends, but... I just go. She says, I'm just coming from a trip to, from a trip in uh, Australia. She she spent three three weeks by herself. Right. Um, I thought that was wow. pretty inspiring. You know, sometimes you wait till the time is right. We keep waiting, you know, until everybody's on the same schedule. The kids are working, yeah. you know, work, family, <laughs> etc. So, and life goes. Wow. Well, life goes so, pretty fast. I don't know about you guys. The last 10 years. Hello. Boom. That fast. Yeah. You know, yeah. and what you just said reminds me of Rita Moreno in the original West Side Story movie. She says, I am a medic now. I don't wait, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wait. <laughs> We're talking uh, old stuff. You know, one of my wonderful friends from Hawaii in the play uh, in Waimea Community Theater is Jay West. Jay, do I see you on this call? You're... you're Mike is turned off. I don't know if you're there, but I just want to delight in your being on the call, Jay West. And you. There you go. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You guys still printing and stuff? I thought I'd uh, see what you were up to. It's no, a big... I'm actually um, uh, pursuing my art business. Oh, good. And all the stuff you're saying goes right on that same path that I'm working toward. Good, Jay. Well, you know, and how do we all keep our momentum going? I mean, if we're lucky, it comes from within inside. But uh, part of this project is all about an ongoing relationship. We watch each other grow. We, we hear good ideas and we share it in, a, in the most positive way. And we root for each other. We're looking out for each other because otherwise, what are we doing? And the cool thing is we can invite people from anywhere in the world to join us. Even from San Francisco, Darshana. <laughs> Good. And Joyce, even from the world of Medicare insurance and DeVita and everybody else. Hey there. Good. Thanks for being on the call, everybody. I don't know if uh, uh, Jim Davidson, you probably had some important things to say. Well, I just see that the main thread of this whole thing is to keep a positive attitude. And uh, that that is the thread of all of the comments. Uh, one thing that I feel is very important that uh, I didn't really start feeling very old until I was 75 or so. But I, the main thing is you, you got to keep a mindset and keep moving. Uh, you just uh, with this, uh, you know, arthritis sets in and I, I've had uh, three orthopedic operations, a couple knees and a hip. And uh, there are people that are, are deadly afraid of having these, these kind of things done. And uh, it just is so helpful, uh, has been so helpful in my life that uh, I had a, a knee done in 2010, uh, hip done in 15, and a, wow. a knee done six months ago. And wow. uh, it, it, if you don't uh, take advantage of the modern uh, techniques that are available to us, uh, you're going to sit around and just, and that's the worst thing you can do. Well, Jim, it's such a big thing because, uh, like, you, Jim is actually my mentor for remodeling our our uh, master bath. We put it, we took out this junky little tub and put this wonderful big walk in, thirty six five foot long big shower, and Sandra and I did this and only yelled at each other a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she is an ingenious construction, accurate. Oh my god, she'll take measurements wow. three times and makes me crazy. <laughs> but there's an enrichment that goes with that. And if my uh, body's aching, I would have never done that job, Jim. I wouldn't have done it, you know? And I think this whole idea of being yeah. cool with, not cool with cancer or cool with pain, but 
face it. I've got to face it. I've got to be real. Here I am. I'm going to do my best. I got great doctors, great support. I'm going to make it right. And that idea of mindset is critical. I think it's critical. And my friend Steve is on the call too. I don't know, Steve, if you, you and I've had a nice chance to say, Hey, we both had some health issues. I just love your spirit. And I'm, I'm glad we're friends through Rotary Club. And, you know, we got a good thing going. Thank you, Boris. Nice. Nice. So Candace and uh, I'm not Candace. I'm on her computer. I say you got a nice player. Yeah, I'm a pretty, pretty good looking Candace, huh? Pretty expressive. Yeah, you got that yeah, feminine, really. feminine so, energy. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been living with stage four um, metastasized thyroid cancer for 10 years. Oh, wow. And um, I'm not, it's, it's never slowed me down. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not, it's not defining me. Uh, or my life or my relationships it's yeah. just it's just a thing that's there and we're we're keeping an eye on it and uh, i don't i don't have to treat it it's nice. just, it's, a, it's really it's a weird situation to, to yeah. tell people you have stage four cancer why aren't you dead wow you know and it's just it's just weird but uh it is weird we, we, just, both, we just both celebrated our we have the same birthday huh. I'm a year older, and we just had our birthdays last week, and I think we're, I think we're, um, I think we're ready to do that rest of the story deal. Okay. Because right, she's been working for 42, 43 years. Wow. As an attorney, and I think, I think the burnout rate is, I think it's really starting to happen. And. Wow. Uh, well, it's, it's, it makes sense. I mean, yeah. I've got a friend who for years ran a certain kind of business circle. And I said, well, you, you could do that again. He said, you know what? I've done it. I've yeah. done that. I'm complete. Yeah. And, you know, it's okay to have chapters where now it's right that we step into a whole new uh, life goal and we jump yeah. on a new boat and we go over the horizon to some new new destination we've never been before. Well, that's what, that's what we're, def we're trying to redefine that now. So it's going to be a it's going to be a process. It's probably going to take us more than more than a year sure. to, kind of, to kind of redefine what we're going to look like. But we, I think we have a better handle on what that's going to be. So, well, I'm so glad that you're sharing that with us because I think that's that's what this has done with me. This current thing, obviously, I've got a big rush going about this uh, new cancer. Yeah. Stuff. But I'm de redefining myself. I'm not saying I'm just doing the same old thing and I'm going to read you know, idle books. I'm focused on doing good work in the world whatever time I have left. And uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have plenty of time. But I just love, love the conversation with all of you about this. So, Dr. David, are you there? Hi, Forrest. How are you? I'm so good, my dear. David is one of my... Buddies were both creating uh, digital courses that have to do with uh, the important work that she does, helping creative, uh, interesting, creative people think outside the box. And and my dear David, you've got a few uh, brushes with health issues too, so we share that. Yeah. Yes, always character building, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, good. Hey, you were a wonderful podcast guest for us, David. I loved your your conversation on the Thriving Past Fifty podcast. Guys, check it out. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead in in future talks like this, calls like this, which might happen on a week or every week basis kind of thing. We'll talk about how do we dive into all these things we're aspiring to. Part of it is hearing people like Davida give her take on her a program and, and her life process. So you guys, you might all be guests on our podcast too, because each of us has something to, to offer. So we're on Spotify and uh, Google Podcasts. It's called Thriving Past 50. So life is good. we got a YouTube channel. We're going to have a bunch of things we'll share with you. I will send out this recording, and you can share it with uh, folks that uh, might not have been able to come. And, uh, and of course, uh, enjoy the ride again. And I'll, I'll send you out a, a little follow-up sheet that talks about some steps you might want to consider as we all explore Thriving Past 50. Good. Love, peace. Sending you guys some love here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much.
Thank you. Thank you very much. And Linda, thanks so much, Forrest. Good. Aloha for now. Appreciate you, Forrest. <laughs> thank you, Forrest. Definitely, Forrest. We love you. Thank, thank you, Forrest. everybody. You guys are the best. Thank, thank you. you. Back at you. Back at you. Awesome. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi, I think we're unmuted now. Say hi. Yes, you hi, are. Hey, Alan. Hey, you guys, you're here. I'm so glad. I didn't know if uh, if uh, if that was the Christine. This just shows your Christine. So, hey, good. Well, you got a little sense of the of the crowd and the and the and the vibe, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. I, we apologize for uh, being late entrance into the uh, discussion. We uh, were. We're teaching our dog how to swim. Oh, there you go. It uh, was a sort of an all-consuming exercise. And Brother. time to get away from us. But, yeah, uh, 